Almighty Father, indeed, how excellent is your name. In all the earth, from one nation to the other, how excellent is your name. We worship. You are doing us good. You are blessing us. You are preparing us for heaven. You are coming back for us again. You are opening our eyes to the understanding of your word. You want to make us wise, wiser than our enemy. We love you. Thank you, Jesus. Happy to be under your feet again at this time. Like Mary. To hear your word. Father, give us your word. Minister your word unto your children. Let the little ones understand. Let the, age, the aged understand. Let all kinds of people communicate by your Holy Spirit to all kinds and all languages. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, God has focus on you to make you feel happy, feel blessed. He has given you another opportunity. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Good. Hallelujah. This study, we are examining it under the title, The Other Side of the Excellent God. The Other Side of the Excellent God. Yes, the Other Side of the Excellent God. Which means, you have to, to know God in the fullness. As someone will say, the elephant is so big that you cannot describe the elephant standing on one side only. You stand on this side to see it. Then you go over to the other side to see the elephant. So, we are going to go to the other side to see and understand our God. The other time when I came, about two weeks ago, on winning attitude in times of crisis, we revealed that our God knows Whatever crisis you are in, have confidence in the God that knows, in the God that understands. He is not taken by surprise of what is happening to you. He has made up his way. I know the thought I think toward you, thought of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end, then ye shall go and call unto me when ye shall pray unto me, I will hearken unto you. So, now we are going to the other side of God. And I told you, in this other side, God, we will see God as being responsible for your crisis. We want to see God as the doer of your crisis. We want to see God as the one that brought your crisis over your life. And we want to see why did he do that. And then next Sunday we shall see if he was not the one that brought the crisis, he allowed it. So next Sunday we will be considering the perfect wisdom of God. Who allowed that crisis to come on your way. But today we are saying he did it. 
Because he wants you to know his fullness. In the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 9 verse 23 and 24. The Bible says. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 23. Thus saith the Lord. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Because human wisdom cannot give you the understanding of God. The knowledge of God. Human wisdom cannot give it to you. Yes. Might, greatness cannot give you the knowledge of God. You are great in this world. You are mighty. You are a ruler. But that cannot give you the knowledge of God. The full knowledge of God. No. And also let not the rich man money and property cannot give you the knowledge of God. But who is he to glory it is he said in verse 24. But let him the glory and glory in this. That he understandeth and knoweth me. That I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness. Judgment. And righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight saith the Lord. Let him that will be happy. Be happy that he knows me. Yes, and he presents three things here. His loving kindness towards mankind, his creation. His loving kindness. But he is also a God of justice. He is also a God of judgment. He is a God of truth and will take actions of truth. So don't think that it is love all the way. If you see God as a lover, as a lover and do not see the other side of God, you will not know him fully. He said, I am also a God of justice, of judgment, and the third one of righteousness, holiness, holiness, blamelessness, a God that loves people for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. A God of judgment. The soul that sinned, he shall die. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the angry God. Then a God of righteousness, for without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Yes, be ye holy, for I am holy. Holiness and righteousness is a God that you don't find fault, find sin in him. If you see him in this complete nature, then you have seen him well. You have made him happy. So I'm going to make you see this other side of God. You have seen his loving kindness, see his judgment also. That he is a God of justice. He is a God of truth. And he executes this in his kingdom. He executes this over his sons. He executes this even over his enemies. When Satan offended in heaven, justice of God took place. The judgment of God came up. He, he sent him out of heaven. When Jesus 
the only begotten son carried the sins of mankind upon himself on the cross at that moment he turned away his eyes he, he will not behold iniquity the son cried father do not forsake me because he said whoever he finds sin in he will judge it now that Jesus has carried the sins of mankind he will judge it he will turn away his eyes yes as if he had forsaken him and he cried for it because the sinner is forsaken by God he did it to his own so know this about God know this you need to know this to arrive at the righteousness and holiness of God know his love accept it know his judgment avoid it then come to his righteousness and holiness a God of righteousness now we go forward to, to expand our understanding our knowledge about this God the other side of the excellent God he is excellent he remains excellent but if you fall the other way while we still praise him for his excellence you will you will know that he's a God of judgment yeah we understand God in his world to be a double edged God because he, in the beginning was the world so the word of God is God and it is double edged in Hebrews chapter 12 I read no, chapter 4 rather I read verse 12 Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 yes the Bible tells us here saying for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a designer of the thoughts and intents of the heart to than any two-edged sword. It's two-edged, but sharper. There are two directions of God. Love, kindness, mercy, forgiveness, but then there is the other also. Judgment, justice, punishment, condemnation death that's something you need to know about God the other side the God of love is the God of punishment the God of mercy is the God that destroys that's God and that's how he has been treating human beings from the beginning up to this time Yes. So, you see him in this form. Double-edged. Again, he is God that creates good. God that forms good and creates evil. From him comes good. From the same God comes evil. In Isaiah chapter 45. Verse 7. Isaiah chapter 45. I read verse 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things the other side of the excellent God you see the good side the light side of God by which you see he formed the light yes the other side you, you see the peace side of God he gives you peace peace 
in yourself. He makes peace between you and himself, God. He makes peace between you and your neighbor. He brings peace upon the earth. This is what you are common. You are commonly, you know commonly about God. But the other side of, of God, see what he says here. Because you are thinking that God doesn't do evil. That only Satan does evil. What, how does Satan come to know evil? Everything originates from God. How does Satan know evil? Because the nature of God provides for judgment and justice. That the sinner must be punished. Though hands join in hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished. Nothing can be done. On earth, you have human beings of fallen nature, character, that you can bribe them. And that which is to be done may not be done again. But you can't bribe God. There's nothing you can do about it. In fact, even sometimes, as we see in scripture, you have repented of it. You said you are sorry, but judgment needs to still come. Because you did it. You get it now. David committed sin with Bathsheba. Every sin to kill the husband of Bathsheba, Uriah. David did all. But then, eventually he married the woman. When, the, when God sent to him, he repented. He repented. Oh, I have done this. Forgive me. He said, yes, I will forgive you, but I will say judge you. Because you did this. I want you to remember this, that what sin can, be, can do in a man's life. If I leave you go, you would think you have it 100% free in my hand. No. This thing that you have done, will make me relax my hand. Your enemies will come in. Your family shall suffer it for this thing that you have done. So, it makes David to know God, the other side of God. Because this sweet, sweet, sweet thing is giving many Christians diabetes. They are not able to stand strong before God. They are not able to be healthy before God because they feel that God is sweet God is sweet, they are not standing they are giving room to, to the devil they don't have strong character really reformed character that can stand the devil they don't have the Lord, the Lord is a judge so I'm, why am I saying this so that when things get evil in your life remember that God might be responsible don't always say it's Satan. Don't always say it's Satan. Ah, brother, this thing you are doing, you may become poor. That is not my portion. It will be your portion if it comes from God. It will be your portion. In, you're careless. You are careless in your life. That's why you need to know the other side of this excellent God. Wonderful God. Loving God. Beautiful God. Check up the creation of God. And other things that God makes man to produce. Even as the light. That is before me now. The electric light. With all the goodness of the electric light. It shines over us. Shows us the way. If you touch the naked wire. Will he laugh at you? Will he smile at you? What will he do? You will narrowly escape death. If you don't die. That is how it is. The nature of God. If you misbehave with it, as you enjoy it, it has the other side. That if you mismanage it, it will strike you. That is how it is. Even if you have a dog at home, play with it with care because it may rough handle you. You say, ah, but you are my dog. 
is my nature. You enter to a place where I will bite. That's why it happens. So, know this girl, he has the other side. And is responsible for many things in your life which your ignorance keep you perishing. Because you never recognize God is the one. Your eyes are thinking of men. Your eyes are thinking of Satan. Your eyes are thinking of witches and wizards. Your eyes are thinking of animals. Your eyes are... You never arrive at the source of that evil. And since you never arrived at the source of that evil, you never gave it the real treatment. And so you remain in your sin. My people perish for lack of knowledge. But today, the other side of the excellent God. Can you say it? Say it again. Can you see what he's saying now? In that 45 verse 7. I form the light. Good side. I make peace. Good side. But I create darkness. Darkness in your way I brought it. You can't make progress. I brought it. You can't even see your way. I brought it. I created it. I'm responsible. I'm talking to you. I'm responsible for your confusion. I am responsible for your pain. I am responsible for your sickness. I'm responsible for your darkness. Yes. And I create evil. If it is my, by me, with, with all your care and carefulness, with all, just as <laughs> Job said, I was not addressed. I planned everything. I made sure no evil came, but evil came. He said, I create. It means suddenly evil will just rise up under your feet like the wild wind. I create it. With all plainliness, you have been very healthy. Suddenly a sickness just developed in you. I create it. I create evil. He said, I, the Lord, do all these things. So I'm not hiding. What, I'm not hiding. I'm not seeking your praise. I'm just re revealing to you my nature. I'm not seeking your praise. Again, he is an angry God. Know him like this. He is an angry God. In the book of Psalm 7, verse 11. Psalm 7, verse 11. God judges the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. Angry with the sinner. God judges, examines the righteous. If you turn to sin, the love that God has for you will turn to anger. If you turn to sin, he's examining you every day. You want to be afraid? My brother, go and be afraid because the, the carelessness you're doing to God is making you not get him perfectly. Not get his good perfectly. It's making you to reward you, making him to reward you on earth, only no heaven. Because Jehu, when he asked Jehu to go and clear out the house of Ahab, Jehu did it. But Jehu went into sin, into seven idols. He said, I'm going to reward you. Four of your children shall rule over you to fourth generation. But as for you, righteousness is not there. No heaven for you. No heaven. You're trying. But what he's giving you is just for this earth. You don't have heaven. Because you do not know his other side. You do not know his other side. That's a God of justice. He said, know it. A loving, a God of loving kindness. Know that I am a God of judgment also. To have a balanced knowledge. Balance. Two sides. A coin has two sides. A man has two, two eyes. A man has two ears. Yes, two nostrils. Two hands and two legs. God has two sides. You need to know the other side. You need to know it. You need it. Yes. That's what he said. God is angry with the wicked. Every day. 
me as you're seeing now as you are sitting me now or hearing me now if you have gone into sin that preciousness that excellence of that excellent God is now turned to anger is your uh, if you is your understanding that you do not know or your understanding that is not applied to truth your understanding does not know but the truth is you have you are no more in the line of precious love you are no more in the line of precious love why iniquity has come into you you have left that path don't glory any longer again knowing about this God see it angry God in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26 for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth there remained no more sacrifice for sins but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries he that despised Moses law died without mercy under two or three witnesses of how much sorrow punishment suppose ye shall he be taught worthy who had trodden underfoot the son of God and had counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and had done despite unto the spirit of grace for we knew him that had said vengeance vengeance belongeth unto me I will recompense saith the Lord and again the Lord shall judge his people verse 31 everybody one two go it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God oh. fearful those in hell know this perfectly it's you that don't know it because some clouds are covering you because you have not understood the scriptures to this point it's because maybe it has not opened up to you fully the judgment of God otherwise it's more fearful than facing fi firing squad it's more fearful facing firing squad that they will kill you if they kill you there is still hope of heaven for you if you are a child of God but if it is God killing you forever you're gone you're going to a hellfire that nobody will serve you your name will be irritating God your name very name will be irritating God stubborn boy stubborn person stubborn woman that's what it means don't play with it yes I'm talking to you the angry God the evil nature of God comes up as a response to sin and disobedience among his creatures he is good to the obedient and evil to the wicked in Jeremiah chapter 18 Jeremiah chapter 18 from verse 1 yes to verse 12 God is good to the righteous but evil to the wicked Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 1 the word which came to Jeremiah Jeremiah from the Lord saying arise and go down to the potter's house and there I will cause thee to hear my words then I went down to the potter's house and behold he wrote a walk on the wheels and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter so he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it then the word of the Lord came to me saying O house of Israel cannot I do with you as this potter see the Lord behold as the clay in the potter's hand so are ye in my hand O house of Israel at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck it up and to pull down and to destroy it if that nation 
against whom I have pronounced about pronounced turn from their evil I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them now a potter was making was fashioning a design he, he marked the clay that's break down the clay roll it again and was using it for another thing yes he that built is he that destroyed because he has a desire what he has built is not making it's not satisfying him so he can dissolve it and turn it to another that's what God is saying I created I create I can mar what I created I give grace I can remove the grace that's God God can do I made you the way you are I raise you up to be king I can remove that from your life is it on me who did it can I not do to my own what I want now he now said listen go and tell them if I pronounce judgment on any person any nation that I'm going to destroy it because I am a destroyer too I destroy. Who shall be destroying the people to hell? Is it not me? I destroy. I destroy in this life also. You didn't hear of Sodom and Gomorrah? Huh? Which I hear of Nebuchadnezzar. I do evil. I create evil. I can mar you. I can get you off. I can remove my virtues from your life. I can remove the position I gave you. I can take away your kingship. I can take away the privilege. I gave it to you. I can do that. So, if I have denounced it of you, that you are going to be mad, you are going to be, you are going to be thwarted, you are going to be changed, your, your form will be changed, I'm going to turn you to a beast, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that because of your sin. I told you his judgment is because of his of sin. If therefore the people repent of their sins and turn to me and do righteousness, I will not do that again. Because the reason why I want to judge you is your stubbornness. You feel you you are anything. I just want to show you that you are not anything. That I showed Nebuchadnezzar that he was not anything. That he was not better than an animal in the bush. I said, hey, hey, go and test being an animal. He went and tested being an animal for seven years. So, I can, you, you, it's because you show. You are showing in your family. You are showing in the society. You are showing in the church. You are showing in the school that you are anything. That you are something big. People must honor you. I said, no, honor belongs to me. Why are you, why are you doing that? Okay, I'll handle you in a way you will not even be a human being again. That is the whole thing. So, that is it. But if you repent and come down from that heart, I will also change my mind. Because I don't do evil to the righteous man. That's what I'm looking for. That's why I, in, I pro provided the earth for. Yes, for the meek shall inherit the earth. So, now, he said again in verse 9, And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it? If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good. Wherewith I said I will benefit them. That's God. He's treating you loving, lovingly is because you love righteousness. Thou lovest righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, the Lord thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. But don't think I created you to give you automatic love without righteousness. Don't think so. Don't think I created you for automatic love. That whatever you do, I can follow. I just, I, God has no option. You just follow me. If I go like that, God has no option. 
Who told you that he has no option? Who told you? What time I say unto a man, a nation, I will build you, I will plant you, and he turns to do iniquity, I will forget all the good promises I made concerning it, concerning him. I will forget. We know this, the other side of God. That is why all the excellent promises of God in our life, we want to fail him in no point. So that this goodness of God should continue. Some of you, you have planned to marry an unbeliever. As I, I will marry and bring him to God. We will bring her to God. You want to play with God. Go and marry and come. This joy you are enjoying. This love you are re receiving. You think you can play God. Go and do. I say you do not know the other side of God. You don't know. You think God is all love. You think God is all peace. He said I came not for peace. I came for trouble. For war, that a, a, the family should be separated, one for me, one for other, and they will fight themselves. That's why I came. You think that all peace, that you can live as you like? I am introducing you to the other side of the excellent God. Yes, the other side. Now, God judges evil and evil workers know it so that when you are crossing over to the other to meet the, the, your enemies you are moving from Christianity because you are going over there to meet your friends to do evil when you are leaving Christianity now you are moving over there to the buy house to drink alcohol or, or you're moving over there at the uncompleted building to smoke wee wee to take all these hot drugs know that you have left the peaceful sight of God you are moving over to the sight of ju judgment and judgment will follow you I say judgment will follow you though hands join in hands the wicked shall not be left unpunished so you know this about God. In Romans chapter 12, verse 19 and 20. Romans chapter 12, I read verse 19. The Bible says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay said the Lord. The Lord is comforting you for the work of your enemies. For the wickedness of your enemies. Actually, truly, you don't know how to punish your enemies. It's God that knows how to handle that person. It's God that knows what to touch. And that man will cry. All you are doing is beat him. Man, beat him. Beat him. He will recover from your beating after one day. And live his own life. God knows where to touch in that man's life. That will make him regret forever. What if that man is a rich man? And God knows where to make him cry. He, he now makes it that fire engulfs the source of his riches. And burn it down. He will cry the cry of more than one year. Of many years. God said, leave vengeance for me. You are spoiling the thing. And sometimes you too, you are not the one who created the human being. You may want to kill him completely. And you will be judged too. What, uh, what, who told you to do evil against divine, the creature of God? You have brought yourself into it. He will never spare you. Because you have done evil. That's why he said, leave the thing. I will handle it very surely. And I know the time to do it. I know the time to do it. If you want to kill a tree, maybe something, kill a tree, a vegetable, do it better in the, in the dry season. When rain is falling, whichever thing you do may not harm it as much. God knows the time. That's why some, the children of Israel can do a thing. He said, let's go. In the time of visitation, I will visit you. That's God. So, 
You don't think that I did it. It is past. It's not past. The only thing that can make it pass is repentance and righteousness. That's what you can make it pass. Otherwise, no, it has not passed. The appointed time is coming. Consider a woman who has done a bad thing. And then she came and is cooking food. Because she was hungry, she cooked the best of the food and now sat down to eat. They came and said, you, this thing that you did, you are not eating this food. Rather, you are going to a place of judgment. It will pain her more. Then, why didn't people tell me early so that I wouldn't have spent my time cooking this food? Do you know how much I put into this food? It's a calculation. It's part of the calculation for judgment. Part of what shall pain you more. God knows the time. He knows how. Live vengeance unto me. That's what God is saying. In Galatians, Chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Don't allow Satan mock you, deceive you. You can never mock the living God. You are a minister in the kingdom of God, in the, in the service of God. You think you can eat God's money and come and tell him sorry. You think you can be sleeping with the women there and come and tell God sorry. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. When you tell God sorry, how do you know whether he has hurt you? You convince yourself that he has hurt you. What if he didn't hear? You will see it after death. That you're sorry God didn't hear it. Because you were mocking him. You were not sincere. You were not fully repentant. It's you who deceive yourself. And think that when I say God forgive me. God I'm going to give you. I'll give you 10,000. You hear? God I'll give you 10,000. Hey this human being. Know the other side of the, the excellent God. That you're mocking at. Whatever a man saw. God will make him repeat. The pit that a man digs, he will fall into it. God will do it. So, don't mock at God. You who go about doing evil, don't mock at the living God. You hear that God forgives sin, you say, go and sin more. I'm preparing to become a Christian, so I want to sin more. I want to sin more. So that, I, you have that type of heart. Ah, come to God and see. He that has his idol in his face and comes to me, I will answer him according to the multitude of his idols. That's what God says. The other side of God. Fear him. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You are praying with him. He said, live sin, you won't live sin. He said, God is ever ready to forgive. Ah, grace of God is abundant. Let's know whether you will go to heaven. By the God we know. You never went to his other side. All you know, I've told you that they said, if you want to see an elephant, the fullness of an elephant, you must stand in two sides. A coin has two sides. If the other side is not there, then it's not complete, uh, it's not complete, a legal tender. That's what he said. You have not seen the other side of God. You have not seen the real God that takes to heaven. You have not seen what he does to mark, to recover them. You have not seen it. Yes, Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 14. Second Timothy chapter 4. The Bible says, verse 14, Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. You go ahead to be doing evil to a man of God. You go ahead to be deceiving a man of God. You go ahead to be selling property of the church and say he didn't know. Or even if they knew, what would they do to me? <laughs> what did they do to me? I heard of a man, a woman, that met her son go to work with someone and the, her daughter, the daughter cheated that man. And the man said, I'm taking you to police station. Huh? 
member of Horemo will take somebody to a police station. Ah. When your daughter is there, you will know whether member of Horemo takes people to police station. Wicked people who think that they will take advantage of God. Who, because I, does God punish? Because sentence against the evil, the wicked, is not speedily executed. Therefore, the sons of men have taken it upon themselves to do evil. Because it doesn't come now. Ah, it will not come now. That's why you're doing evil. Surely, do, though your judgment delays, it shall come. And it shall come at the right time. At the most precious time. The time you need time is the time they will take you over. Judgment will come. Is the time judgment will come. So take it and repent of the evil. The Lord reveals himself as one that can do evil. Even against his precious children. When they commit sin and refuse to repent. Leviticus chapter 29, 26 rather, verse 14 to 23. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 14 to 23. The Bible tells us saying, But if ye will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments and if ye shall despise my statutes or if your soul uphold my judgments so that ye will not do all my commandments but that ye break my commandments my covenants I also will do this unto you I will even appoint over you terror consumption and the burning earth that shall consume the, eye, the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you. And ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate, they that hate you shall reign over you. And ye shall flee when none persuade you. And if ye will not yet, for all this hacking unto me. Then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. Yes. Verse 21. And if ye walk contrary unto me and will not hacking unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. God says, I will do it. I will do it. I will do it. Child of God, is your father, has he begun any evil in your life? Because of your failure, because of your immorality, because of your disobedience, because of your pride, has he begun anything already in your life and you didn't know? You are rather saying it's witches and wizards that are doing it. You are rather saying it is Satan that is doing it. You are rather saying it is your neighbor. Oh, my father, my uncle. It is my mother, grandmother. It is uh, the church. Uh, it is uh, this brother. It is. The... Are you saying so? God says he is the one doing it. He is the one doing it because of your sin. Your sleeplessness is from him. The pain in your body is from him. The swelling in your body is from him because of your sin. Therefore, you need to check up your life and see whether it is God himself that is doing this thing. That's what I want you to know. Very important. Very important. Know it. Know it. In Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. I read from verse 15 to 20. Deuteronomy 28 verse 15 to 20. It goes. But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To observe. To do all his commandments. And his statutes. Which I commanded this day. That all these curses. Shall come upon thee. And overtake thee. Cursed shall thou be in the city. And cursed shall thou be in the field. Cursed shall thou be in the shall, shall, shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land and increase the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shall be shall thou be when thou comest in and cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing 
vexation and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do until thou be destroyed and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings whereby thou hast forsaken me yes can you see what the Lord said he would do he would send by the hand of whom he can send he sent by the hand of an evil spirit to end up the life of Ahab who has decided who decided to be perpetually stubborn to the Lord he sent an evil spirit to handle it he can send anything he can send a storm he can send mosquito he can send fly he can send snake he can send a dog he can send a tiger he can send a lion he can send witches and wizards he can send anything that he can send there his creature there his creatures to handle you so when those things are biting you when those things are hitting you check up where is it coming from have you backslidden have you gone back to devil have you gone back that's what the lord is sending those demons to deal with you so I'm saying he will do it. See the other side of God. See the other side of God. Ye man of God in court that are abusing your ministry, abusing your effort with iniquity. See the other side of God. Women in the church. See the other side of God. You know how to sing. Do you know the other side of God? You sin, they still give you work to do. You sin, they still give you opportunity for ministry. You sin, God is waiting for you. A time is come, your cup will be full. The other side. So when you're going through crisis, check out. God might be responsible. Check out. So you see, that's what God is saying. Aha! Now you can understand the case of Jonah in another way. Back to the book of Jonah, which we have really used for quite long now. Jonah chapter 1. I read from verse 1. The Bible tells us saying, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish for from the presence of the Lord yes so Jonah rose up and flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish so he paid the fear thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tashis from the presence of the Lord. God did something to handle Jonah. God did something to handle Jonah. Read, read verse 4. One, two, go. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea. So that the ship was like to be broken. Is that the crisis you find yourself? Family. Family. Are you in crisis? Check up. Somebody might be there. That has attracted the anger of God. A child might be there. Or maybe it's the father of the house. Or the mother of the house. Has turned off. And God says, I will punish. But one thing is this. The children of Israel discovered this thing of God. And Moses also talked about this. Shall one man sin and shall the multitude die? That's the question again. The whole family is passing through crisis. For one man. For one person. The children of Israel, when they heard that the children of Manasseh, the children of God and half, the children of Reuben, the children of God and half tribe of Manasseh had turned to other gods. They quickly ran to go and clear them because they told you didn't hear one Achan sinned against God, and the whole army of Israel could not make it. People started dying. You want God to forsake us? Is it this type of God that 
a person in your family is sinning, you're not crying. You're not pleading. I said, God, I am not there. Jesus, have mercy, deliver him. Oh God, you're not pleading. That God might say that you're sighing. Hey. When Sister Linda came to, to Nigeria for her testimony, heavenly encounter, hellish in, encounter, because of the names of the great men of God that were mentioned, her sister in America said, we are a poor family. This thing that you're mentioning, and this and that, they are rich people. If they carry you like this, you are not enough. It is the whole family that will join. <laughs> Be careful. So she didn't want to mention the names anymore. So she was planning uh, a man that is like this. A man, a, a God said like, the, the other man that is like this. God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Early in the morning, the Lord Jesus came weeping. My church is dying. Because of this man you're, you're talking about, I, I told you. And people have followed them. I am the one that went to the cross. Now my cross is rendered vain. I'm telling you to go and mention their name so that people can hear and save themselves from their hands. You are busy saying they will kill you. You are going back to hell. You are going back to hell. You are going back. Beating was going on on her. Finda, what happened? God say, I, I'm going to hell because I, I'm refusing to call the name of God. Hey, God, cancel our, my blood. Cancel it from Linda. My blood is literally linked with him. I am a child of God. I have a new blood. God, you, please, don't join us. Don't join us to her. Deal with her alone. Me, I am for you. Jesus, help me. <laughs> you people. You don't know God that your sister is sinning. You are not doing anything. Cry enough. Plead enough. Intercede enough. That God will know your righteous heart and, is, and avoid you than to be collecting money. Money of halotry. The money of dogs should not come to the house of God. The money of prostitution should not be given an offering. But you are taking it. You are rejoicing with it. Ah, what money did you gain? Mother, talking to daughter like that. You will be punished by the living God. The time has not come. You don't know that this God is a God of judgment. He's waiting for the right time. He has calculated your time. That at eating and rejoicing with the wicked. You are not showing remorse. You are not interceding. You are not crying that your member of your family is in this trouble. And or be it a church. And Israel. That you, the Lord says. Achan has stopped me from being among you. Take away Achan, then I will be there. I will come up. But as long as Achan is there, you are treating him. Thou hast the Jezebel who called herself a prophetess and is teaching my people to commit fornication and to eat food, sacrifice unto idols. I made, I commanded her to repent. She has not repented. And a church will be allowing these people wearing trousers, exposing their naked body. A church will be allowing these people because of any gain from them. Play witchcraft in the church. And they know those people. They are keeping quiet. Uh, did God say you should keep quiet? Or you are afraid? He will forsake that church. And the pastor will be punished with everlasting punishment. You don't know God. That's why you are behaving like this. Do you know the cause of dying on the cross? That you are allowing one person in your church to Doom all others because you're fearing man. What can he do to you? What can he do to man? Okay, what can he do to God? What can he do? Know the other side of God. He's waiting for you. You must know it. You must know it. If you don't, you'll know it in hell. So he said, God, all these things you say you are forgiven. So you didn't forgive. He said, did you really repent? Did you really repent? Well, is it no mockery you were doing? I am sorry. You go back. I am sorry. You go back mocking at me uh -huh. I didn't listen to those prayers because your heart was not there you are not making effort to actually repent of your sin I saw it I would see to the heart I know you were mocking so I didn't listen to that go to hell 
So be careful the other side of the excellent God. Say it, everybody. We are passing through it now. Yeah. So you see, the Lord sent the wind into the sea. And then the mariners were af afraid. And they cried every man unto his God. And cast forth the wires that they were that that were in the ship into the sea now what did they do they now came and went to see that Jonah was fast asleep verse 6 so the, the ship master came to him and said unto him what meanest thou O sleeper arise call upon thy God if so be that God will think upon us that we may perish not and they said unto him and they said to everyone to his fellow come and let us cast lots and their lords fell upon Jonah verse 8 then said they unto him tell us we pray thee for what cause this evil is upon us what is thine occupation and whence comest thou what is thy country and of what people art thou and he said unto them I am an Hebrew and I fear the Lord the God of heaven which had made the sea and the dry land. Then were they made exceeding afraid. Ha! Huh. God brought this. God brought this. Yes. And in verse 12. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea become unto you. For I knew that for my sake, this great tempest is come upon you. It came upon you because I am among you. Be very careful of friends and friendship. It came upon you because I am among you. Be very careful of associates. Which pastor are you under? Which man are you under? Which woman are you under? It came upon you because I am among you. Hey, be careful whom you associate with. Be, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. They have done many things that merit judgment. If you refuse this counsel, judgment will carry the two of you. Now, read, let's read verse 16. Verse, uh, verse 15. Go there. One, two, go. And they, so they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea. And the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord accident, accidentally and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. That thing was discovered that it was not from Satan. So binding will not work. That thing was discovered that it was not from witches and wizards. So back to sender will not work. <laughs> you hear? Back to sender. Back to sender. Who is the sender? You are sending this thing back to God. Trouble has come on you. More, that's more stubbornness. Instead of examining yourself, you are saying, this thing came from God. Back to God. Back to God. You are sending it back to God. Hey, man. So, they, they, they examined the matter and discovered it in Jonah. Solved the problem as prescribed by the living God. As they dropped him into the sea, the wind stopped. Clap hand for the great God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I say amen. amen. Discover that you are the one. That it is God doing this thing for you, against you because of your sin. Then you confess the matter. And that problem that has been for so many years will just die. Ab King Abimelech took Sarah into his house to marry for about five years or more.
Sarah was in his house. As long as Sarah remained in that house, the whole house was played. All his kingdom played. I mean, the people of his palace and no woman gave birth to children. They were all barren until they discovered the cause. It was not another king that came to cast spell on you, O Abimelech. It is that you did it with all your innocency and perfection. You say, I, with, with, with all my integrity, innocency of my heart. Yes, with all the innocency of your heart, you have not known the word of God enough. You have not made investigation enough. You have not prayed enough. And now you have taken an accursed thing, a man's wife, to be in your house. You have deprived a man, a prophet of God, of his wife. Judgment has overtaken you until it was discovered. Abimelech delivered Sarah back to her husband, Abraham. Abraham prayed for them and there was the, the gate opened for them. Why? The people started prospering, started bearing children, getting healed, getting this. It was because of Abimelech. Pastor, you might be the reason why your church is not growing. You have sinned against God. You are the reason why the church is not moving forward. You are not true. You are not sincere. You are a liar. How can God work with you? How can God bless your world? How can he? Check up your life. This cry over your family, are you not the reason? Is it not because of you? Is it not because of what you do against God, against his people, against the church, against the name of the Lord? You are making the people of God to laugh at him. You are making mean, people he created to laugh at him. You are making people. That's why God locks up that area. Crisis. And he's the, the key is in his hand. I have the key of hell and of death. You did it. And God also revenge upon you because he has said leave vengeance unto me you did it against another God said I will do it against you because you are stronger than the other is there no stronger than the strongest is God not there check out reason for your crisis God might be responsible I create evil I create evil. So you need to know this. You need to do know this. Examine your life. Look at it in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 36, from verse 14. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the hidden and polluted the house of the Lord, which he had hallowed in Jerusalem, and the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers rising up the times and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place but they mocked at the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy therefore he God brought upon them the king of the Chaldees who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary and had no compassion upon young man or maiden, old man or him that stupid for age. He gave them all into his hand and all the vessels of the house of God great and small and, he, and the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king and of his princess all this he brought to Babylon and they burned the house of God and break down the wall of Jerusalem and burn all the palaces thereof with fire and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof and them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon where they were servants to him and his sons unto the reign of the kingdom of Persia. God gave them up stubborn people they will not hear all these youths that are jumping up and down in homosexuality in lesbianism all these youths 
and including you that are watching pornography all these ones you are waiting for your day judgment will take will overtake you judgment will overtake all of them all of them polluting the place and you carry them to be playing music for you you don't wear you don't manner the type of dress they put on you don't manner what bother about their character oh yeah, rather is your their performance this excellent boy he performs and you clap hand for him you're clapping hand for somebody god is angry with you're clapping hands with somebody who has five girlfriends immorality everywhere god will judge you for clapping hand to encourage a sinner i'm telling you the other side of god everybody say the other side of the excellent god check out don't be in that side don't be in that side all we who are singing oh lord how excellent is your name we are in the sight of favor we are in the sight of his favor that is why we sing with joy but there is the other side of god yeah you will know it also and you need to know it therefore examine yourself in haggai haggai chapter one haggai chapter one i read from verse two The Bible tells us here, Haggah chapter 1, from verse 2. Haggah is before Zechariah, the Malachi. Malachi, Zechariah, Haggai, from the other side. Now, chapter 1, the Bible says, verse 2, Don't speak at the Lord of hosts, this say the time is not come the time that the lord's house should be built then came the word of the lord by haggai haggai the prophet saying is it time for you oh ye to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste now therefore thus see the lord of hosts consider your ways ye have sown much and it bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earned wages, earned wages to put it into a bag with holes. Thus see the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Are you not seeing signs? Are you not seeing evil things? you say money is not staying what is happening to it why is it not staying you say you always spend all your money in hospital why is it so you say you're, you're, you're always having an accident and that's how it has been this accident wounded this place you still have another accident it wounded that way and that other one still close to you has this accident what's happening consider your ways examine your ways verse 8 Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. This is what you left doing and to respond and react to it. I cut off prosperity in your life. I cut it off. Yes, verse 9. Ye look for much and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it, whom I did blow upon it, not the devil. Everybody said, not Satan. I standing for God. God is not hiding this matter. It's your theology. Go and change your theology. That God does not do evil to anybody. He does evil to sinners. He does evil to the stubborn. He does evil to the disobedient. He does evil to children. Parents, youths, all age. He does evil to them for their sin and disobedience, for mocking at him. Yea, ye look for much, and lo, it came to little. And we ye brought it, whom I did blow upon it. Why? Said the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is wasted, that is waste, 
and ye run every man unto his own house you forgot my own I therefore hail your leg you were going you went to rush out you didn't pray you're just rushing out I used the handle of a door push him back push him back push you back your cloth tear you say eh? what happened what God did it everybody say God did it for long you have not been praying business and business will business take you to heaven this Lord says you should consider find out what happened that the handle of the door tore your cloth go and ask him God he will say did you pray for how many days now you are rendering prayer nothing your mind is outside is it not me that would bless you outside go back to pray then the door the handle of the door will never harm you <laughs> praise the lord you are not examining your way evils are happening to you you don't bother to check up it's because you did not know the other side of the excellent god you have not taken time to examine your ways why is like that why is that sickness refusing to go you have not taken time why are you not getting contract again why is your salary not flowing why is your promotion delayed there is the other side of God check out do you merit it you say you fasted and prayed we have fasted say it day you fast when you fast did you change your character when you fast did you go and do your restitution or you think God is a child you can command or is a, is a corrupt man you can bribe you bribe him so that's what God is saying therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew and the earth is stayed from her fruit and I called for drop for a drop upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil and upon that which uh, that which the ground bringeth forth and upon men and upon cattle and upon all the labor of your hands of the hands if you don't change it will not work continually your effort will mean nothing if you don't change don't look to God for prosperity of I know patience is there with God mercy is there with God who can patiently do something who can for mercy do something and in his wisdom but know the other side of God he might have been exhausted with you his patience might have come to exhaustion his patience whether 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 is uh, no more go for judgment if patience has not done it whether judgment will do I wake him up with judgment. I'm coming to remind you because even with you, those things happening to you, you never knew it's judgment from God. I am coming to remind you now. Turn, turn your mind back there and see them. They are from God. As long as iniquity was involved, as long as stubbornness, you committed immorality, a married woman, and you never reveal it, you never confess, and you think you can go on like this and prosper. Never would go. Never. You kept a woman somewhere. Anytime you go there, it's, it's your concubine. And you still come and say, Oh Lord Jesus, wonderful. Hallelujah. You are doing that to who? To God? He will want to slap that mouth that is hypocritical. Don't mock him. Don't mock him. Don't mock God. He's worse than Satan. He punishes worse than Satan. The one that would judge Satan. Is he a small person? Repent. That's what you need. Go before God to examine yourself and to be examined by God. Psalm 26, verse 2. Psalm 26, verse 2. Examine me, O oh Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. Go to God. Let him examine you. Yes, go to God. Ask him to examine you. 
Second Chronicle in the Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 13. Verse 5. Yes. The Bible says. Second Corinthians 13 verse 5. Examine yourselves. Whether be, ye be in the faith. Prove ye your own selves. Whether you are a reprobate. Or a real Christian. Carry yourself like this. Go and sit down. The prodigal son sat down and examined himself and knew how, oh, how many hired servants. But I have, have food to eat and to spare and I'm perishing here because of stubbornness. I go and confess. Go back to God. When he went to confess, was there no abundance? Did not the father clothe him? Was there not a feast for him? Were there not dancing and jubilating? Was not the father testifying? Was he lacking food anymore? Was he not restored? That is it. That is it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28, the Bible tells us, but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Examine yourself. Otherwise judgment will follow. You are eating unworthily. You are moving forward. You are carrying out activities unworthily. Many have slept, died. Many are sick by that, by that act. Repent. Be humble and sincere. Seek real salvation from God. Repent of your sin and turn to righteousness. Do your restitution. Then you will see that God will lift up your judgment from you and prosper your life again. Yes, yeah, listen to the confession of Nebuchadnezzar. In Daniel chapter 4 from verse 24. Daniel chapter 4 from verse 24 the Bible says this is the interpretation O king and this is the decree of the most high which is come upon my lord the king that they shall drive thee from me and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen and they shall wait thee with the dew of heaven and seven times shall pass over thee till thou know that the most high ruled in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree, of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee and break off thy sins thy, by righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor for it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility all this let's read verse 28 together one two go all this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar Verse 29, one, two, go. And the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. I continue. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee and they shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will the same hour 
was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen. And his body was weighed with the dew of heaven till his ears were grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like birds' clouds. At the end of the day, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes unto heaven and my understanding returned unto me and I blessed the Most High and I praised and honored him that liveth forever and ever whose dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from generation to generation. He is the one that made me to be an animal. He judged me for my pride. He judged me for my rebellion. He judged me for my high-mindedness. Ah, it was God that did it. It was God that did it. It was God that did it. That made the hair of my body grow out like the hair of eagles. And make my thought change until I reason and say, Why am I here? It's because I rebel against God the creator of my life. I went against God, the maker of my life. I challenged God. I thought I was a great one. I thought I was like a great one, like Satan thought and was cast down from heaven. This is experience of man that I have received. I went to become an, an animal in the bush until seven years passed over my life. Now, I really I recognize God. I give God the glory. I give God the praise. I give God full of wisdom and power. Who can challenge him? I cannot. All unto him belongs the kingdom, belongs the power, belongs the dominion. And he continues, he continues to praise. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? At the same time, my reasoning returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established. I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty added unto me. Now, everybody, verse 37, one, two, go. Now, I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. Rise up upon your feet, repent. You, what do you think you can do? You are proud in this world? Did you make the world? You are proud over other people. You are torturing them. God will do it himself. God will do it. He will answer you himself. Repent. The, the goodness of God will come back to you. That plague will be removed. As it was removed from Nebuchadnezzar. Excellent majesty shall be added unto you. Prosperity will come back to you. Good health will come to you. That which God blocked you, he will remove it. Repent. Don't say Satan. You have been saying Satan all this while. Your fasting has not helped you. Sin. The reason why that thing came. Thank you. your family take them one by one to God in prayer do your best do your best before God in that family let no one person doom the family examine the church don't allow one sinner to doom the church he the marriage for punishment punish him he the marriage for excommunication excommunicate them Thank you, Lord. Worship.
Make up your life. Take yourself to go to examine you. Every time a crisis comes, start first with yourself. Start first. It is when you don't see sin in your life, you don't see rebellion, then you move to the other side. God allowed it. That's the teaching of this week. Thank you, worship. Ah. Worship. Don't deceive yourself. I'm a Christian already. In that day, the Lord shall say, It's not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, but he that doeth the will of my Father. Worship. Thank you, Father. The purpose of this message is to purify you, humble you before God, so that you will know that God punishes. Maybe he will punish you. Don't take the grace of God in for granted. Don't take the gift of God in vain. It's a God that judges and punishes. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his mind. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glory it. Glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me that I am the Lord which practiseth loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. I just worship. I worship you, Lord. I just adore the Lord. I worship you. I praise. Thank you, Father. This is who you are. This is who you are. This is who you are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. New God more and more. New God more and more. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more, Jesus. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more, Jesus. I want to know you more and more. 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 I want to know you more and more, Jesus. I want to know you more and more. Father, I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more, Savior. I want to know you more and more. Oh, yes. I want to know you more and more. Oh, I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more, Jesus. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more, Jesus. I want to know you more. I say I want to know God more and more. I want to know God more and more. I want to know God more and more. Oh yes, I want to know God more and more. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more. Oh, I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more. Hey. God, open the eyes of your children. Let them know. Let them know that you did it so that they can seek your face for repentance and come out of their problem. You are not a wicked God. You chastise in love. You chastise that they may not partake of the judgment of eternal hell. Let them know and repent. Let the sinner hear this. God is punishing you so that you can repent while you're still alive on earth. Else he would destroy you in hellfire.
In Jesus name we pray Still in prayer Open my eyes Oh Lord To your wrong To your wrong Open my eyes Oh Lord. If there's any wrong in your life Open my eyes Oh Lord I am ready To obey 